welcome to the session today i am here to explain varshal's algorithm so in the last class we discussed about single source shortest path algorithm that is called distrust algorithm so in the today's session we are discussing about all pair shortest path algorithm that is also called as floyd varshal algorithm okay so first varshal algorithm first we are discussing about what is the mean of all pair what is the mean of all pair shortest path algorithm so first say for example this is the graph a is a one vertex b is a one vertex c is a one vertex so this is the graph so first all pair nothing but what is the shortest distance from a to b what is the shortest distance from a to c similarly what is the shortest distance from b to c what is the shortest distance from b to a when we are calculating b to a means a to b b to a c it is a directed graph then only we are calculating that a to b and b to a separately right next c to a c to b so this is the mean of all pair shortest path algorithm all pair shortest path algorithm in another terms you can call it as we are defining a path matrix so path is existed in between two distinct vertices or not path is existing in between two distinct vertices or not also okay so first we are seeing that one only so varshal's algorithm if a graph g see the graph is defined as g is equal to v comma e v comma e v is nothing but set of vertices e is nothing but set of edges so g is equal to v comma e where v is nothing but set of vertices and e is nothing but set of edges say so the path matrix of g can be formed as so the path matrix so in general what is the uh, logic or what is the procedure we are following is so the path matrix is, we can define as like this a1 a2 a3 and so on an n refers to the number of vertices n refers to the number of vertices right so this is the lengthy process so varshal has given a very efficient algorithm to calculate the path matrix so here why it is a lengthy process is initially we have taken a1 first we are calculating or we are we are designing xnc matrix say for example this is one a b c a b c so a to b is an edge a to c is an edge b to a is an edge b to c is an edge c to a is an edge c to b is an edge so these are all the zeros so this is called as a zero matrix means we are considering that direct edges we are considering that it's a direct edges so next we are considering that a1 a1 means via one vertex means that here one means say we can call it as a so via a vertex is there any alternate alternate paths in between source to destination similarly by updating a not to we are getting a1 by updating a1 to we are getting a2 in the a2 we are considering that b is a via vertex b is the via vertex 
Similarly, in the next step, by updating A22, A3, A3. So, in the A3, via vertex is C. Like that, each and every time we have taken consideration into one vertex is a via vertex, we are calculating the shortest distance in between the two distinct vertices. Two distinct vertices. That is the logic. So, here, each and every time we are calculating uh, PK of IJ, P is nothing but path, path, matrix, it's a rows and columns mixture. So that's why matrix. So I is the row index, J is the column index, K represents the which one is the via vertex, which one is the via vertex. So if there is a path from V I to V J, means vertex, I to vertex to J to vertex, the path should not use any other nodes except V1, V2 and so on VK, then it is 1. Means here, initial iteration we are taking into consideration K value is 0. Otherwise, 0. Means the matrix consists of either 0 or 1. If it is 0, no H. If it is a 1, there is an H. Okay. So, there is a path from VI to VK, VK to VJ. Means, see, we are calculating the shortest distance. Similarly, there is an alternate path or not. Okay. So, in case of alternate path, when we are considering the K is the intermediate vertex, VI to VK plus VK to VJ. We are calculating like this. Means I to K is a path, K to J is a path, so I to J is a path. Means that based on that we are getting some distance. Whether the distance is shortest or not. Means comparatively the existing distance, we are getting the new distance. Comparatively these two, which one is the shortest one. We are doing like this, that is called Alpe Chartist Path algorithm. We are not considering the distance, only we are considering the paths. That is called partial algebra, right? So that is the mean. P k minus one i k is equal to one. So P k minus one k j is also one. Means that simply this is the formula. P k i j is equal to P k minus one i j means present no path. So this is one. This is one. So, 1 and 1 means 1. So, 0 or 1. So, finally, 1. So, this is the way to calculate the path matrix. This is the way to find out alternate paths in between source to destination. Varshal's algorithm. What is the Varshal's algorithm? So, initialize the path matrix first. Initialize the path matrix is nothing but initially we are uh, setting all the values are 0. Say suppose the number of vertices given is 4 means that we are preparing a path matrix like this. We are preparing a path matrix like this. Means 4 by 4. 4 vertices are there, it's a 4 by 4 matrix, all the 4 by 4 matrix consists of 0 values only. 0 values only. Right. So, repeat the step 2 for i is equal to 0 to n minus 1. When we are initiating with 0, okay, 0 to n minus 1 is nothing but the size of the array is n. Say here, n number of vertices are there, i refers to 0 to n minus 1 means n minus 1, 0 to n minus 1 means n number of iterations you are performed, n number of iterations you are performed. So where n is the number of nodes in the graph, means what is this in the graph. So repeat the step 3 for j is equal to 0 to n minus 1, okay, 0 to n minus 1. So if a of i j is equal to 0, then Set P of i j is equal to also 0. Means A of i j means what? 
This is a adjacency matrix. Adjacency matrix. A is the adjacency matrix. B is nothing but path matrix. Right. So P of i is 0. Else P of i is equal to 1. The adjacency represents a non zero value. So why we are getting non zero value? Say the given graph may be a weighted graph. The, if the edges existed, okay, it represents a non zero value. Means it represents some weight, say 10, 12, 50, like that. If the edges not existed, the corresponding entry represents 0. 0. So that's why it represents 0, here 0. Else means other than 0 value, other is may be represented with 1. Means there is a path. So like that we are initializing the path matrix first. Path matrix. So initially we are uh, defining the matrix as zeros. Where the edges existed, there we are replacing with 1. Right? This is the case first. Next, calculate the path matrix P, repeat the step 5 until K0 to N minus 1. K0 to N minus 1 means, in the first case, say here, 0, 1, 2, 3. Here also 0, 1, 2, 3. So, in the first iteration, I am calculating 0 as an intermediate vertex, is there any alternate paths? In the next iteration, k value 1, means 1 is taken as an intermediate vertex, is there any alternate paths or not? In the next iteration, we are taking that 2 is an intermediate vertex, is there any alternate paths or not? Like that, each and every one taken as the consideration as an intermediate vertex, is there any alternate paths? That's why k value is 0 to n minus 1. This is existing path matrix. i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 and j is equal to 0 to n minus 1. Where we are implementing formula, this is the formula. This is the formula which is already studied in the previous slide. So bk of ij is equal to k is the intermediate vertex. i throw j column. Okay. Means i is the source, j is the destination. You can call it as like this also. pk minus 1. pk minus 1 means previous iteration. What is the ith j value? Okay. Logical r pk minus 1 of ik and logical end of pk minus 1 kz. So this step is iterated for all the iterations. Means here, you get same kind of thing that is uh, k is equal to 0 1 matrix 1 is a 1 matrix 2 is a 1 matrix finally 3 0 is updated into 1 1 is updated into 2 2 is updated into 3 so the final resultant matrix path matrix outside of this loop you are getting that is Warshall's algorithm output means by considering direct paths and indirect paths also. We are getting a path matrix. That is the Warshall's algorithm. So right now we are doing the exercise. Exercise. By taking a one problem, sometimes they are giving the problem also. Try to calculate the, what is the path matrix. What is the path matrix you are getting. Right. Say, so A is a 1 vertex, B is a 1 vertex, C is a 1 vertex, D is a 1 vertex, so total 4 vertices. Here also we are taken as 0, 1, 2, 3 as an index. Here also this is 0, 1, 2, 3. This is 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? This is our assumption. Why? Because A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D is not imagined as a row, row index and column index. Always row index is an integer, column index also an integer, by default array index starts from 0 only, right? So first, I am calculating, I am calculating P, K value is 0, I value is 0, 0. Means first I am targeting this one. First I am targeting this one, right? Okay. What is the substituting into this formula, substituting this into formula. Say, here k cannot be imagined as 0. k cannot be imagined as 0. Why? Because, okay, so initially here 0 is there. Initially we got 
A0 matrix. So directly we are calculating one matrix. Directly we are calculating the one matrix. So here we are imagining as one. Means that K value is one, I value is zero, J value is zero. Substituting into this. Okay. So P of K minus one zero, of zero zero, logical R. Next P of K minus one, one minus one again zero. I K K value means one, means zero to one. Logical and P of zero of one zero. One zero. So zero to one one. Okay. Zero to one means zero zero value right now zero only. Logical or P of zero one value say one so one and one zero value one zero value again zero. So one logical one and zero means the resultant one is zero only. So this is not updated. Next again we are calculating P one of zero one. P one of zero one we are calculating, right? So here also P of zero zero one. Next P of zero zero one is the intermediate vertex. So zero one and P of one 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 one. Okay, zero one value is already one. Zero one value it's already one. So no need to compute this. Why? Because one or something definitely it is one. So this is we have to compute. Why? Because in the next case also it is a one. So no need to compute again. So this one we are computing. So p one of zero that is called three. So p zero of zero comma three logical r next. P next P zero of P zero of next uh, this one this one we are taking as what is uh, so zero and the k value is one k value is one and logical and P zero of P zero of next one and three. so this is we are calculating. Once again, I am repeating. So zero, zero three, and zero one. K value one, one three, right? So P zero of zero comma three. So zero comma three always a value is already zero. So logical R. So zero one, zero one value is one, and one three, one three value is also one. Means this value is updated as one. Means that so this value means this value is updated as one. Similarly, similarly we are calculating so here zero is there. Means is there any updation of p one one zero? Okay, what is the k value one? Means directly you can calculate one one value one one value is already zero. One one value is already zero, so zero logical R. This is zero. No need to compute again. Why? Because zero logical and anything it is zero only. So this is zero. Means this is not change. Next up, we are going to this one. We are going to this one. So this is is there any change? No change. Okay, two two. So we are calculating. So P one half. One, one. We are calculating. We are calculating, right? We are calculating. Next, so P one of P one of. Okay, so P one of one one is equal to P one of one one. Okay, P zero of one one. Logical R. Next, P zero of K value also one, so one one. Okay, 
logical and P0 of P0 of uh, what we have to take? So again k value 1, j value I means j value is 0. J value is 0. So P0 of 1, 0 value is 0. Means no change. Means that no change. So next we are going to the next one. Say we are checking this one. Say P1 of P1 of 2 comma 0 is there any change? Already P of 0, P0 of 2 comma 0 is 0. Okay, so we want to compute 3 again this. So how to compute? K value is 1. So 2, 1. 2, 1 value is 0. So no need to compute it again. So this is 0. Just you understand the logic. Without substituting into the formula, directly you can write out. Right. Okay. Next again we are calculating P1 of 2, 1. So in case of P1 of 2, 1, 2, 1 already 0. Means there is no direct edge. We are, we are calculating the indirect edge is, the, is there or not. Or is there any indirect path. Okay. So 2, 1, 1, 1. So 2, 1. Again its a value is 0. 1, 1 value is also 0. So no need to compute. This is also 0. Next. P1 of 2 comma 2. 2 comma 2. So this is already 0. Okay. Is there an alternate path via 1? So 2, 1 value is also 0. So no need to compute. This is also 0. Next, we are calculating P1 of 3 comma 2. So 3, 0 value 1, 3, 1 value 1. So we are checking 3, 2. Why our vertex is 1? So 3, 1. 3, 1 is a 1, right? Next, 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2 value also 1. So this is value is 1. See, once again I am repeating, whenever we are calculating 3, 2, via vertex is 1, means what we want to check? 3, 1, so 1. Next, 1, 2, yes it's 1. So there is an edge in between, indirect edge in between 3, 2, 2. That's why this value also changes to 1. Okay, so like that we need to update the matrix we need to update the matrix at last we are getting the resultant path matrix resultant path matrix so in this iteration these two values are updated these two values are updated okay so go for the iteration next iteration so this one value is updated to one this one value is updated to one so we are moving to the next case means P2. We are moving to the next case P2 of we need to check say for suppose this one means 1 1. So 1 1 we are checking. At this time k value is 2. Say k value is 2, i value is 1, j value is 1. Substituting the formula. Initially this is 0. So no need to write again. No need to write again. Okay. So present this is a P1 matrix only. We are calculating P2 matrix. Right. So P2 of 1, 1. Already P1 of 1, 1 value is 0. So next is there any alternate path we are checking. So the K value is intermediate value is 2. So 1, 2. 1, 2 means. So we need to write clearly one more time. So 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So what is the intermediate path? So 1, 2, 2. So 1, 2, 2 is 1. 1, 2, 2 is 1. And 2, 2, 1. 2, 2, 1 is 0. So no need to compute this. This is 0. That is 0. Next we are calculating P2 of P2 of 2 comma 2. 2 comma 2, this one. I am checking. 
right? Say, k value is 2. So, already p1 of 2 comma 2 is 0. Okay, so right now the intermediate vertex is also 2. So, 2, 2, 2, 2. Means 0, 0. So, no need to check this one also, 0. Okay, we are checking this. What is that? p2 of 2 comma 1. So, p1 of 2 comma 1 already 0. Okay, p2 of 1 already 0. So, we are checking whether right now is there any alternate path via calculating a 2 as an intermediate vertex. Right, so that is 0. So, we need to compute k value is 2. So, 2, 2 value, 2, 2 value it is already 0. So, with the mapping of 2, 2 value it is already 0. Directly this value is also 0. Directly this value is also 0. Next, we need to calculate this one. Is there any alternate path of 2 comma 0 present? So, in this situation till now we did not get any alternate path. Okay. So, 2, 0. 2, 0 means k is an intermediate vertex 2. So, 2, 2, 0. So, we did not get any updation. This one is also 0. We did not get any updation. This one also 0. Next, p 2 of 3 comma 3 is the updation. We need to check. So, p1 of 3 comma 3 value already 0. p1 of 3 comma 3 already 0. So, via 2 vertex is the alternate path. So, 3 to 2. 3 to 2 is 1. Right, 1. Next, 2 to 3 is 1. Super. So, this value is updated. So, this value is updated to 1. So, like that, each and every entry case, we need to find out is there an alternate path. See, here also clearly, 3 to 3 means D to D is there an alternate path. Yes, is there an alternate path. What is the path? Means, 3 to 2 means what? D to B. So, D to B is an H. D to B is an H. Next, B to D is an H. That's why D to D is an H. That's why it is 1. Once again, I am repeating. So, D to D is there any alternate path I am checking. So, D to B is an H. B to D is also an H. That's why D to D is an H. So, intermediate vertex has B. So, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Like that, that's why D is an intermediate vertex as 2. So, in the 2 case, we are getting intermediate vertex. Okay. So, this is the way we are finding is there any alternate paths in the next iteration. So, right now, this is a P2 matrix. So, here we are getting 1, 1. Here also we are getting 1. I think this is the previous uh, iteration. Uh, value we are getting, right? Right? So, first, right now case, right now case, we need to calculate the P3 values. Means K value as 3. This is the last iteration I told. So, K value is taken as 3. So, P of 3, first, where, see, this is 0. So, first we need to calculate 0, 0. Means, Already P2 of 0, 0 value is 0. See, this is P2 matrix. P2 of 0, 0 value is already 0. So, by considering 3 via vertex, is there an alternate path? So, 0 to 3, S1. 3 to 0, S1. Yes, this is 1. So, this will be make it as 1. This will be make it as 1. Next, we need to calculate. Next, we need to calculate where so P3 of 1 comma 0 value 0. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, sorry, 3, 2, 0, 3, 2, 0, also 1. Yes, this is also 1. Once again, I am repeating. 
1, 0 means we need to calculate 3 is intermediate at one place, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 0, I am checking. So, this is 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, sorry, 0, this is also 1. So, 1 and 1, 1. So, this one is also updated to 1. So, here, this is also make it as 1. Or indirectly, you want to say, so, B to A, is there any H? B to A is there any H? Till now there is no H. A to B is an H. B to A is no H. So how they are represented is, okay, B to C is an H. Okay, B to C is an H. Next, C to A is an H. Just try to verify once. So here 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 means 1 to D. Sorry, sorry. B to D is an H. This is not right. B to D. See, 3 is nothing but D. So, B to D is an H. D to A is an H. So, via D, B to A is an H. So, that's why we are getting one. Next. Next. This one we have to check out. So, P3 of 2 comma 2. P3 of 2 comma 2. Means we need to check 2 to 3, 3 to 2. So, 2 to 3, 0, 1, 2, 2 to 3. This one. 1. 2 to 3, 1. Okay. 3 to 2, 1. So, this one is also updated. This one is also updated. Means this one is also 1. Next, we need to check P3 of 0, 1, 2. Right? 0, 1, 2. So, we need to check the next one. So, 2, 2, 0 also. 2, 0 also. 2, 0 also still 0. Okay? So, we need to check. So, 2, 2, 0 means 3 is enter vertex. 2, 2, 3, 1. 3, 2, 0. 1. Yes, this one is also updated. So, this one is also updated 1. This one is also updated. Right. So, in the P3 of 2, 1. 2, 1 also we are calculating. So, 2, 1 is also 0. Means we need to check 2, 2, 3. So, 2, 2, 3 is 1. 3, 2, 1. Also 1. So, this one is also updated. Means this one is also 1, 1. Yes. Next, we need to calculate P3 of 1, 1. P3 of 1, 1. So, P3 of 1, 1 means 1, 2, 3. So, 1, 2, 3, 1. 3, 2, 1 also 1. So, this one is also 1. So, I think almost all the entries are 1. So, right now, the P3 matrix, right now the P3 matrix is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. This is the result. Means by considering each and every one as a via vertex, we are getting the path matrix. So, this is the first matrix. At last, we are getting path matrix like this. This is the HND matrix. This is the path matrix. Means from each and every source to each and every destination, some alternate path is existing. This is the Varshal's algorithm output. This is the Varshal's algorithm output. Right? So, this is the way to calculate the path matrix. This is the way 